start recording. So here we go. Um, I'll be solving advent of code um, in Rust while learning Rust along the way. So let's see. Um, that's day three because I solved it the previous two days, but I solved it in Scala and then um, I got interested into Rust and then I wanted something to solve in Rust to just get used to the language first. So let's read here. Um, the elves managed to locate the chimney squeeze prototype fabric for Santa suit. Um, unfortunately, anomalies are still affecting them. Nobody can even agree on how to cut the fabric. The whole piece of fabric they are working on is a very large square, at least 1000 inches on each side. Each elf has made a claim about which area of fabric would be ideal for Santa suit. All claims have an ID and consist of a single rectangle with edges parallel to the edges of the fabric. Um, each claims rectangle is defined as follows. The number of inches between the left edge of the fabric and the left edge of the rectangle. Mm -hmm. That's that's like the X um, dimension. And then the number of inches between the top edge of the fabric and the top edge of the rectangle, which is the Y, the width of the rectangle and the height of it. So a claim like, um, that's, that's an example of a claim. So it has an ID. Um, it has the three as the X, um, two as the Y and five by four, which is the dimension of the whole rectangle. Visually, it, it claims the square inches of the fabric represented by these hashes and ignores the squares. Um, okay. The problem is there are many claims um, that overlap, causing two or more claims to cover part of the same area. And yeah, this is an example. So that's the first claim here. It's covering this part, um, this box here. And then the second claim, ah, the first claim is covering all of this actually. Um, this four by these four. And then the second claim covers this um, four by four as well. And then the third claim just claims this two by two here. So one and two actually overlap in this area, which is marked by X's. And if all elves proceed with their own plans, none of them will have enough fabric. How many square inches of fabric are within two or more claims? So are trying to get any overlap. Um, count all, how many square inches of fabric are within the claims? So let's get the input here. Hmm. Okay, that's a bunch of um, claims. So maybe we need to put this as an input folder, maybe. Input file here. Um, I pasted it. Um, then we need to deal and code with all of this. So let's search for stuff here. Um, so I don't know anything in Rust. I'm, I'm literally um, having zero knowledge. Not zero exactly. I, I read a little bit, but um, I read a little bit, but uh, I'm not so familiar with things. So let's see. So yeah, here, um, so I understand a little bit of Rust, of course. Um, so I can start using stuff and um, explain what's happening. So let's leave this here. Um, 
I need to make sure. <laughs> nice. So this is a mutable um, reference for file.create. I guess file we have to import it. Um, probably use IO. Hmm. Use standard um, FS file. Okay. So actually, we are not creating a file, we are reading a file. So we need the open function. And that file is called input. We can just say input. Um, it's saying the question mark operator can only be used in a function. Um, let me just put here and put that here to be able to see the chat. So the question mark operator can only be used in a function that returns result or option um, or anything that implements try trait. Can it use it in a function that returns unit? Does open return unit? Why is it like this in the documentation then? Open actually returns a result. Hmm, maybe maybe I have to. So I didn't I didn't um, use this as well. What what does this have? Can I control click stuff? To understand what does prelude have? Um. Hmm. So we're attempting to open a file in a read only. Um, if we need to open it. Yeah, we, we, we just want to read only anyway. Um, we're just reading the, the contents. Hmm. There is there is a nice thing here huh so we can use the expect one to panic immediately if the file didn't open i still don't understand why the question mark doesn't work um we can search this later um, and then we want the contents to be a string and then we say read to string on this file to string and read to string takes a mutable reference to string which is contents um, what does this return it returns a result um, we just expect it to work so we would write uh, reading contents Okay, um, that's a mutable string reference. It says expected mutable reference found struct string. Hmm, so um, we need to, ah, right. We need any time to refer to a mutable reference to write mute before it. Cool. And then we can just print it. So we can remove this here. We can print here. Contents. Oh, 
Nice. So we got all the file in a string, and then we need to split the actual contents. Let's rename this to input. Um, there is a split function, that's cool. So, does it split in, does it? Hmm, at most n items, no. Um, I want to split by new line, so maybe I'll just write like this. Um, that should give me an iterator, I guess. It gives me a um, split kind of trait or something. So we need to see the that split struct the split struct um, is created by the method split on the string which we just used So So it implements an iterator so we can iterate on it immediately. So for each line we need um for each line we need to parse it so that we take the id we kind of don't care about the id so so the solution here would be as of my guessing and I thought of it um, beforehand so we have the x and y axis um, of the start of the claim and then we have the, the width and height so we need to to actually parse these and then we need to uh, mark every single box in this claim by the number of claims it has I think that's kind of brute forcing it but I feel this would work because mark it in a like hash table or something um, so we can at the end check exactly how many um, single square um, is referenced in a claim and then we can check any box that's more that's referenced more than one once um, that should be um, like summing all of them up would give us the square inches like every square inch we are marking in our hash table um, so let's just parse every line here um, so we want to parse stuff. Um, parse and rust. Um, we need to actually uh, match regex, regex, rust. That would be the easiest, I guess. It has a crate. Um, 
Can't we do it without a crate? That's a crate, that's a crate, that's a cookbook. Ah, there is a uh, Rizix. Ah, oh, again, they are using a crate, I guess. Yeah, they are using the regex crate. So, is there a regex or stand a standard library? It seems that everyone is using the regex crate and I guess I'll just use it. Um, it's not a bad thing to use crates. I mean, Rust is um, having um, everyone is um, saying great things about Rust's crates. So let's see here how to use them. Um, yeah, need this. And then match on stuff like this. So we are creating a regex for our input. Let's take one input and convert it into regex. So we need a hash and any number of digits, a space, single space, character, and then add single space character, bunch of digits, and another bunch of digits, then a space character, of digits and an X and a bunch of digits. I'm not sure if we need to escape these special characters. We can test it. Um, on regexer. So that's our regex. Let's take a bunch of numbers, that's our numbers. And then I want to see the... So yeah, it, every at least this whole thing matches everything. Um, if I wanted to add groups, so I would match this group. I like Robular. Cool. So the match groups are here. Um, that's 338, 80. That's great. And we need to match every single group we care about, which is the X and Y, the width and height. Perfect. So we take this here.
cool. So when we create, just to learn Rust as well, here we are creating a regex type. And it actually doesn't give us the regex immediately because parsing the string might fail. So um, it just unwraps it. And unwrapping here is fine because like unwrapping a result, if it's an error, it will panic and um, it will like terminate the whole program at this line. And um, if it doesn't panic, um, it will just work fine. Like unwrap the actual regex type from inside the result here and uh, RE would be the regex itself. Um, so unwrap is great because if this fades, we don't our program, we don't want our program to work anyway. Um, and I guess most of the programs do depend on preset regex, which should always kind of um, succeed at parsing. Yeah, anyway, so that's the regex type and we need to extract all the groups and this regex. Um, so let's go back here. The functions on regex. Um, We need to capture so we need to capture stuff. Um let's see. Mm -hmm. Uh dot captures. And you give captures the string you are trying to you want to get stuff from. Um, so our string here is the line, and we don't need this. So this. These are the caps and then caps dot um, so that's our X hmm, so I captures actually we we say unwrap on captures because that's that's a result here. And then we don't unwrap anything else. We just um, map it to something because get generally gives us a match object. Um, not object, uh, struct, sorry. Um, so here it Cap it, it captures the first capture group here, um, which is the numbers. So it, it's always numbered from one, I guess. Let's see. So we can just print line x. Would that work? Um, yeah, match is not a um, string. Huh, so we, we, we have to map. And the map, um, you give it a map or because it's an option. Yeah. And um, if it's empty, like you return the empty string if it's a map. Or, you can do something actually, map or uh, zero and convert it into a integer immediately. So that's the match. 
and the match um, as a string we 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 want to convert it to integer would that work I don't know what from trait does. Hmm. So you put the type and you put from. That's cool. Um, this is the type from M. Would that work? The trade bound U32 is not satisfied. Maybe I need to Can I do this. Hmm, so from actually converts in between the same kind of um, types. So uh, all I see here is from numbers to numbers. So let's see parse um, string to end just. And um, parse works with ampersand string str um, and then we call parse give parse the type and then unwrap that works cool I guess great 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 um, So a better thing to do here would be like this. Shouldn't be unwrapping. Um, we are mapping to um, option of end and then we map or
you know what i'll just do the unsafe thing here uh, i mean this works definitely um i just think it's not so clean i feel there is a better way but let's leave it now as unsafe like this and then this is the x the x is um integer 32 because we specified this here we actually think it's always positive um, and then we say how to print print and rust Hmm, it's an option because the get returns an option and then we need to get the option out by probably unwrapping again right cool <laughs> So here it's building up, um, uh, grabbing uh, the regex crate. Great, we got all the numbers, um, the X numbers. We need to get all the y numbers. Let's let's make sure these are x's actually not something else because I'm not sure of the indexing. So 338 is right. So that's the first capture group. And then we can just copy this um, x, y, z, um, not y, z, sorry. Um, x um, width and height. And these are two, three, four, and they are all uh, unsigned integers. Cool. So all we need now is mark every every square inch every single square inch every one square inch inside this um, square specified by these parameters should be marked as um, should have a count in a hash table or something so that's kind of a big hash table and let's see hash tables in rust hash map Hash map. So we use the standard collections. I'm not sure really what Prelude is doing. Would it compile like this? Huh. A Prelude is having the read to string in file. Hmm. Cool to know. So file just is having the. I guess the open function and then read to string is actually implemented inside the prelude. Nice. So we will use the hash map, um, make a mutable reference to it before the, our for loop. I just formatted all my code using Rust format. Um, here it needs the type annotations of course so we have a hash map of a tuple 
uh, unsigned 32, unsigned 32, and then unsigned 32. So our key and value are the exact, the absolute coordinates inside the, um, these are the absolute coordinates. Okay, so so this this we can call it counts or square counts. And um, I, I just wanted to do something. I wanted to get all these parsed things in a, in a vector. So we can deal with it much easier than dealing with it in just, just inside this for loop here. Um, so... we can actually map here so that's um that's a vector of all the um, claims and here we're gonna map and map will be taking this as a line Will be returning let's make a struct um, call it square as an X Y with not a width um, uh, so that's a claim. Yeah, it has a width and the height. Okay. And we have here we can say return a claim that has X as can we say X Y H W like this? Yeah. Cool. So we return a claim here. And then we need for each claim to, as we said, mark the square counts. We can bring this down here. So we are gonna loop over the claims. Oh, of course, um, dot it. Is this a map? Why is this a map? Hmm. 
Hmm, cannot infer it. Yeah. Um, so it's a vec of um, claims. Would that work? Yeah, it works, of course. Uh, map here, map is mappable um, kind of trait. Um, so we don't want to map actually, we want for each kind of thing. Um, which would be much easier to get by just a for loop. Um, Claiming claims, um, we can get the absolute values of all the absolute dimensions, the absolute coordinates of um, every single square inside the claim. So we are gonna have to loop over inside I and then loop over inside Y um, yeah Not X and Y, sorry, um, width and height. And these are like the deltas. Let's say this is delta X. And this is delta Y. And then we are gonna say that uh, square counts Yeah, um, we want to say that f squared counts has the um, the exact co coordinate before like f squared counts dot uh, contains key. What's the key here? So yeah, let's let's say the key is the claim x plus delta x and claim y plus delta y. And then we are gonna give it the key. If it uh, if it doesn't have the key, we need to give it the reference. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't have the key we want to insert the key. Is there insert or update? There is an or insert, that's nice. Or insert is um, 
as it say here, insert a key only um, if it doesn't already exist. So here, inserts a key value into the map. If the map didn't have this key present, none is returned. If it has it present, the value is updated and the old value is returned. and modify um, there's also or default where are these um, one entry An or default ensures the value is in the entry by inserting the default value f m t and returns mutable reference to the value of the entry. Um, that's nice. There's also this and, so this 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 usage is so nice. Um, we have the map here, and then we say the entry that we want, um, which is the key, and then we say and modify uh, or insert. Um, let's see that here. So and modify it. Um, we need to add the, to the count um, one or insert um, a zero or insert a one because we saw it the first time here and uh, we don't care about anything here anymore so that should mark all the claims. Let's get out all the squares. So we want to print line of the square counts.
Um, there is an error here. Expected U32, but found an integral value. Hmm. Um, so maybe the value, not the reference to it. Excuse me. So we get the reference and then we compare this reference to zero. I mean anything that's greater than one actually not zero. Let's see what happens here. So what I expect this is, is um, when we read the string, we read it with the last line as last line is empty. So either we can clean up the input here or we can clean up the string we read here. is empty it seems so and actually we want it to be not empty um, I'm still understanding the references in Rust it seems that sometimes we don't need to put the reference sometimes we need it It's kind of confusing for me sometimes. Anyway, let's see if that works. Ooh, cool. Let's see if, um, if our solution here is the right solution oh that's great that's great so that's that's um it takes a bit of time because like it takes one second in rust um, to loop over every single claim and then loop over every single um square inside like every single one inch square one by one square um, and mark it in a hash table and then uh, use this hash table as um, 
as a way of um, tracking the number of every square inch how many um, was it referenced in the claims and if it's more than one then we just mark it um, we count it with us that's kind of a the naive um, solution let's see if that would work afterwards so um, the next part of the same question here says amidst the chaos you notice that exactly one claim doesn't overlap by even a single square inch of fabric with other claim with any other claim if can somehow if you can somehow draw attention to it maybe the elves will be able to make santa's suit after all for example in the claims above only claim three is intact after all claims are made hmm so we need the id of the only claim that doesn't overlap that's kind of nice uh, so we need the claim id at the end here cool so that's the claim id now let's copy this here um, so we will shift everything by one Um, that's the ID. And then I'll add the ID here as a gain U32. Everything should work fine, but we grab the ID now. um so we can actually say we can take this into an outer function that um, says part one um, it takes a vector of claims and it just returns to us the um, U32. And this is why doing this. can say here part one of claims Count, by the way, returns a U size, so it doesn't matter. We can just return the U size, it returns here. Um, and this works. So that's part one. Um, we can make a part two function. And we don't need part one anymore to run, so it wouldn't take much time. Let's say the function of part two is taking again claims, which is a vec of claim, and returns to us a single ID, which is a U32 of the claim that um, that we we want. We can do this um, this by a really similar approach to what we were doing here. 
but we will need extra information in this hash table hash map But a more efficient way is to check each claim against all the other claims. So we will have an n squared algorithm of n squared um, by taking each claim and um, checking it against all the others by by checking if they overlap. How would we check if they overlap is by checking the absolute values of their um, left corner, upper left corner and lower right corner. So let's see that in code. Um, we will need to loop over each claim here. Um, I'm 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 just trying to think of a more efficient way to do this. So give me a minute here. Can we store them in a um, hash map? And then for each claim we can count if they overlap with anything else mm -hmm. So as long as like actually if claim uh, one is the same as claim two, um, then we should just continue. And if we didn't find any claims, we just return zero here. Um, hmm, we move the value. We don't want to move the value. We want just to borrow it actually. Um, yeah, sorry about that. It's a um, word value here. Um, it's borrowed anyway in the whole function, so we don't need to borrow it for every single for loop. And it's borrowed here as well because we don't want to modify it. Um, so that's kind of nice. Thank you. 
as I said, I'm still struggling with the references a little bit. Um, but I'll get used to it. So yeah, if the claim is the exact same claim in the second loop and the outer loop, um, then we skip it. Uh, otherwise, we check against everything. And we check for that by um, getting the absolute top left corner coordinates and the absolute um, bottom right corner coordinates of each claim. And then we see if the if they overlap somehow. So if either the x and y of one claim is like if the top left corner of the second claim So let's see here. Um, let's get the um, top left. Let's say left um, of claim one is actually the, we can make a uh, function that would help us in doing this easily. Um, so, Left is a function that takes a claim and returns for us the claim um, that x plus Hmm. The our top left one is claimed at x anyway, and then we need to just get the um, bottom right one. Bot right. By. Um, I keep forgetting the semicolons. I kind of got used to Scala maybe. Um, it's complaining here. the type annotation it's a reference to a claim hmm. um, actually yeah um, That 
that's a closure. And then we get the um, We check actually if they overlap. So for each claim, we want to see if it overlaps. So we want the mutable reference here. Is there a find first? Sorry. And rust. Okay, that's that's a good one. I'm unwrapping stuff just because um, it's kind of easy. I'm wondering why I find takes a mutable reference to self. Um, it seems like it shouldn't. I mean, it just... It just should return the, the found one. Uh, the problem here is a different one. Here it says expected U30 to found um, 
unit which is weird because option it returns an option of uh, self item which is one of the claims so So if I unwrap it, it should just give me the type. And then if I call ID on it, it should just gives me the give me the ID that I want. Um Ah, um, so sorry. So find takes a mutable reference because it takes a mutable reference from the iterator and the iterator is mutable, but the actual vector itself isn't mutable. So that's that's fine. Um, it's nice to notice something like this now. Um, so the iterator return is actually an it, which is a struct for the iterator itself. And then we we use find which is working on the iterator itself struct um, to actually go through every single claim um, and return the one that uh, that was found. I'm still wondering why it doesn't return the exact thing I'm looking for. So let's see here a um, it and then find and then find takes a um, kind of double reference kind of thing. So what's C type anyway? Hmm. Ah, okay. So because I'm returning inside a for loop, I cannot just use the Rust's way of returning. Um, Rust's way of returning without writing the return key keyword. And so I have to kind of write explicitly the return keyword to say that I'm returning out of this for loop. Uh, otherwise, it assumes that the for loop is returning a unit, which is an empty tuple, um, which I don't want. So 
but something still is missing. Um, so find takes a predicate and then ID. Ah, okay, 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 okay. That works now. Yeah, sorry about that, still learning. Um, so ID here is returning. I had the semicolon, so when you put semicolon on Rust, it, it returns um, the empty tuple, the unit. I wonder if it will give me the correct error here. Yeah, yeah. So I was confusing both. I had this semicolon here, which shouldn't have been here. Um, so yeah, instead of returning true uh, immediately here, um, sorry, I should return the true here actually. Um, and then return false. If something happens, um, so I need to make a F check here. And the F check is that the top left corner of the claim It has come to my mind that I can use the part one algorithm. So while I'm inserting um, square count, I can insert the references to it from other claims. So at the end I can check Uh, that would be a much more complicated one. Uh, let's continue here. So if the top left corner, um, the x-axis, uh, the easy, let, let's, let's get the easy one. So if the top left corner is the bigger than the top left corner of the other, okay. And um, I wonder the hand and rust. I guess it's like that. Um, and the bottom right is. Sorry, so I have the bottom right of the um, So if the top left is bigger than the top left and the bottom right is bigger than the top left as well. 
that should make it they, that they are not overlapping but I'm checking here for the overlapping ones so if they are overlapping um, by having either by having either the x uh, bigger than the x sorry By having the x of the bottom right bigger than the x of the top left of the second one and so the x's are overlapping but we need to check the y's as well um, so how to check the y's, that the y that 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 means that the I need to draw this On some kind of shapes. <coughs> um, I just need squares. Okay, anyway, I can draw with the pencil. Um, so that's C. Okay, and this is C two. So the x, the x of the bottom right here. If it's bigger than the x of the top left here, okay, and um, and the y, the y of this one. is bigger than the y of this one so actually that that should that doesn't work we we have to check if it's kind of contained in between these right so because because they might not be overlapping in this sense as well like this is a box and this is another box uh, so for example if you are checking that one here and that one here the x's are bigger um, the y's might be even big as well if this this one was down here and then they are not overlapping because we have to check for these as well um, so it's kind of the 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 thing we should check for is the containment of one to the other and the containment happens by uh, checking the x here and the x here and checking if this x falls in between or vice versa um, uh, 
and then we should check as well that the y here and the y here and that this y falls in between these y's so the x's and the y's should be kind of contained in between um, the two boxes and then we should we should check this for this corner here and we should check this for that corner here if it's again contained in between these two but let's check an edge case if they are overlapping in this way hmm so again so we are checking actually not just for these two corners we are checking for these corners as well so if any of the corners is contained in between um, this and that which means any of the corner is bigger than this or smaller than this strictly for the tuple okay um, so top left and bottom right are great in that sense to, to compare to uh, all of the other corners of that box here um, would that work in all the times they are overlapping like this like this like that um yeah i guess so So we need functions for the top right. Um, top right, we will have to add the width. And then the bottom left. should be adding the height cool so we check for the containment in C2 okay
I'm shadowing values here, so that's fine to use the same name um, as a parameter as parameters in this. Although it's confusing a bit, but um, yeah, I can write abbreviations maybe here. Um, so that that should return a bool, which is. Um, done by um, that the top left corner of the claim bigger than the top left or the end first the top left of the claim is less than the bottom right or um, Um, that's kind of um, hopefully clear. So we check if any of the corners of the claim we are having is in between the top left corner that's supplied to us and the bottom right corner that's supplied to us. So we check for the containment of um, that cor claims corners, all of the four of them, in between these two corners, which we will supply from outside the function. Um, so we should check for uh, if claim corners um, which is the claim um, inside the top left of claim to and uh, bottom right of claim to return false. I think return can or can not take the semicolon. Anyway, I guess that should work now. So we are always unwrapping stuff and uh, uh, and it's really hard to trace anything without uh, exceptions. So 
So find didn't find any value that had this. I need to check for something here. Um, is one and like 10 and 20 bigger than nine and 10 also is 10 and 20 bigger than nine and 22. That's a true. Oh, that's a true. This is bad. So I thought Rust compares two pills by comparing every single element. Um. How's that a true? So 10 is bigger than 9, of course, but 20 is less than 22. So this bigger than should fail and give us give me false, not fail, I mean. Um, unless tuples don't actually... Um, compare correctly. So if this is a 90, I think it should give me false at least. That's right. So it just compares the first value to the first value and that's it. Um, so this needs to that would require us to um, go deeply in the compare stuff, the order stuff. Can I see the trait implementations? The actual implementation?
not sure what's lexical compare. Maybe we should just make our own. Our or comparison type um, instead of using tuples because it seems the trust Can I just derive? I saw some people deriving. Um, Would that work? Hmm, so we need partial order and partial order. It's probably order. Eek. I'm partial eek. T1 is a point. And the R is a point. Let's see.
I'm afraid Rust didn't um, derive these correctly. Just right here. So it's a false, that's correct. Oh my God. So deriving doesn't work as I expected. It just did it on the first value, which seems logical in some cases, but not in my case. It just takes the first value and compares, which I don't want. So I guess I have to implement this stuff myself. Compare. So we need partial eek. Um, Cool. And we need partial compare. Uh, partial um, board. ordering to get the type and then we would should say compare I guess we can just say um, So we get the partial eek, um, we need the ord to get the partial ord. And we definitely need to read more about this. To get the ord, we need the eek. So partial or trade for values that can be compared for a sort order that comparison must satisfy anti-symmetry, transitivity. 
these requirements mean that the trait itself must be implemented symmetrically and transitively. It uh, can be used with derive to derive structs will produce a lexicographic ordering based on the top to bottom declaration order of the um, structs members. When derived on enums, variants are ordered by their top to bottom declaration order. Partial order only requires implementation of partial compare method um, with the others generated from the default implementation. However, it remains possible to implement the others separately for types which don't have total order. For example, floating point numbers um, requires you to type your type to be partial eek. Uh, partial eek, ord, and ord must agree with each other. It's easy to accidentally make them disagree by deriving some of the traits and manually implementing the others. Mm -hmm. which I don't want to do. If your type is ORD, you can implement partial comp um, by using comp. If not, I guess I can do it manually. So let's try to do it without ORD. Um, an option for ordering and ordering is um, less than greater than kind of thing
let's still test that here. I realized something. Um, so I'm trying. To... So yeah, my logic here was 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 false anyway, because I was just comparing the less than and then the the equal and then anything else is greater, which is wrong because if x is greater and y is less than then it would say greater which i don't want um So it's partially ordered that it's less than, which I care about, bigger than, which I care about, and anything else I don't care about anyway. So it should just return false. Which is what partial ordering is for. that out oh that's wrong that's wrong you can filter
So I want to print a victor here. It seems that I need to uh, print the debug info of the victor. Ooh, okay. So there is clearly a big number of claims that f any of its sh its corners fall into the others so what do we do here um, we filter all the claims by checking each claim against all the other claims so that um, if the claims corners I'm checking if I missed anything in the implementation. Um, so the top right is we get the X and we add the width to it. And the bottom left is the when we get the X and the Y we add the height to it. So if it's a two by two, let's close all of this. If it's, um, for example, the third one here, it's five by five. So we count five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, We start from zero actually here. So one by one and three, that's one and three, so zero, one, two, three. Okay. And then we add four to it. Three plus four is Seven. So three, four, five, six, and seven. So we actually mess up the the corner calculation. We should be adding the width minus one, adding the height minus one, which makes sense because. 
if you are adding the whole width, we didn't accommodate for the presence um, that 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 we are adding with the width to the the first point, the first square. So we should add the width to the first square minus one. Um, so that was a bug there. Hopefully that's one bug. Oh my god, that's 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 even worse. We got a bigger number of squares that aren't overlapping. So again, we ignore the fact that they might be overlapping in just a single square, because when we say, greater than, we don't say greater than or equal, although actually we need it to be greater than or equal, because if they start from the same square, so it's contained in it, right? Same for less than or equal. Does that make sense? Um, hopefully it does. That didn't help much as well. Um, I'm afraid because of my implementation of greater than or equal things. So maybe I can revert these and do it here. But there's clearly something wrong I'm missing as well. Um, yeah, that helped a little bit. Not exactly though. And I'm afraid it's a problem here. Um,
Maybe I should be testing stuff, but I'm reading the code again. Maybe I missed something. So again, we check the um, every claim against all of our claims. Skipping the same one. So that if the um, corners of this claim I totally missed the um, valid case here. I totally missed the valid case, which is if the whole box is contained in another box. So we need to mutually check if this contains this or that contains that. Like we got close, but we didn't get the exact answer. So we have now six, six claims that might be correct, hopefully. Um, so we check if the claim corners are in top left here or bottom right here. Let me check again the calculations here. So bottom right is x plus width minus one, um, y plus height minus one. And let's try this here. So um, x plus width five minus one is four, three, seven, minus one, six, four by six. So four, let's count one, two, three, four. And then we go down here, six, um, oh, sorry. Zero, one, two, three, four. And then we go down zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four and six are the absolute value here. And then we need to make sure that this is not equal or greater than anything else. Like this side here shouldn't be greater than or equal any of the corners here. And again, I'm missing things because um, they might look like um, they might look like this. Which means that all the corners are outside. each other but they are still overlapping so my algorithm clearly doesn't work um, after all of this time and this sucks um, but
we can manipulate it a little bit to make it not totally suck so x should be contained in between the two x's So the border is in between the two borders. And clearly these boxes um, kind of have this idea. Um, so we shouldn't just be checking borders, we should be checking, we shouldn't just be checking points, we should be checking borders. Um, so that's left border, that's top border, this is bottom border, that's right border. And then we should be giving back the borders, so the left border is the X. The top border is the Y. The bottom border is the Y plus the height minus one. So that part makes sense. And then the right border is the X plus the width minus one. Here. And then we should be checking borders. So the if the borders um, are having um, So if the left border of the claim is bigger than the left of the other claim and bigger than or equal to the other claim and um, less than or equal the right Or 
um, let's continue in the same way. Um, exactly like this the top is bigger than the top and smaller than the bottom or the bottom If the border is in between, but we need the top or bottom to be in between as well. So we need to check actually for the right border is in between the left and right. These are ors, and there is an and in between these, which is that the bottom or the top is contained in between the bottom and the top. I think there is no need for this mutual check, but let's leave it there. I'm really tempted now to um, kind of tired um, so I'm tempted now to just solve it by trying all possible answers or just continue this some other time because um, the stream is so long now so um, kind of try to brute force maybe That's cool. They they block the the way, the brute forcing way, um, in a nice way. So I guess that that would be it for this stream. Um, this stream is totally unorganized. It's just live coding. Me trying to solve stuff, um, even if I fail at the end. Um, it's not a big deal. I'm just learning Rust. Um, thank you everyone for watching this and have a nice day. So um, I just tried one last thing, one last condition I was thinking of, um, which clearly made sense. Um, so we were checking if the left border is contained in between the left or and right of the second claim or the right border contained between the left and right of the second claim. We forgot an important one, which is checking if the whole second claim is contained between the um, first one, which is when the left 
is less than the left and the right is bigger than the right. So actually this to cover exactly the, um, this case that I've shown here in the sketch, um, it's like a plus sign um, where the upper border, like neither the upper border or bottom border are contained in between these, but they contain totally the other claim. Uh, this happens on the opposite way as well, that um, um, these right and left corners contain the whole um, left and right of the this uh, box as well. So that actually worked and I can show you here um, that it gave me for uh, one five, which is um, clearly the correct answer in the advent of code. And um, that was just the last addition. Thank you everyone again for watching. Um, sorry, it took me so much time. I feel um, definitely that this is not the best algorithm. It just came to my mind, so I decided to program it. Um, it was kind of a bad decision. There are many other ways um, to solve this clearly. Um, but yeah, um, it was a nice try anyway. Thank you, everyone. Um, have a nice day.